Hey guys, it's me Tiffany and welcome back to my channel. So I've been doing this thing where I've been going through every Ellen Hopkin books and talking about them individually. I don't have a particular order I'm going in, just what I feel like at the time. Because honestly, I probably should do the newest release at the time that this video is coming out. But today we're going to do Impulse. So, like every Ellen Hopkin book, there are some trigger warnings. I don't always do the best job when it comes to content warnings. But with Ellen Hopkins books, especially her YA and her adult books, yeah, they definitely need to be said. So, just like the Crank Trilogy, which is the other videos I've made so far, just about every drug is mentioned in this. So if you don't like drug use, this also takes place in a mental facility. Uh, suicide is talked about a lot in multiple forms like cutting, pills, uh, guns, and even parental suicide. Parental abuse is mentioned. There is a teenage sex worker. There is sexual assault. There is a... There's a lot. Um, yeah, those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. Like, There's like several forms of sexual assault in this. Also, something like, because I've only read this once, and I, it was like in 2009. This was written in 2007, and I was a teenager. I didn't realize this at the, I did not realize this at the time, but I kind of don't like the way the gay character is handled in this, or the way they handle the idea of his sexuality. I have seen a lot worse, but I do not think Ellen Hopkins did a good job in this. So if any of those things kind of bother you, this may not be the book for you. So let's jump into it. Okay, so Impulse is a multiple point of view, sort of like uh, Fallout. I do think she does a better job in Impulse than she did in Fallout, but it's about three 17 year olds that are in a mental health facility because they all try to commit suicide in different ways. They find each other and they help their, they help each other in a way that they know how. And on paper, they are very different people, but they find a way while they're in Aspen Springs, which is the name of the mental health facility, to be pretty decent friends. And yes, there is a little bit of an annoying love triangle in this. First one I want to talk about is Connor. He is probably my least favorite point of view in this book. He is like your typical rich jock. He uh, tries to shoot himself in the chest. He obviously fails. And he's really heartbroken over his ex-girlfriend. The second character is Vanessa. She is the only girl. She does have bipolar disorder and the way she copes with it because she's not medicated, or at least she wasn't before this mental health facility, is she cut to kind of keep her emotions under control and one day she cuts too deep throws her into like aspen springs and she's kind of like the she's kind of like a mary jane type character where i didn't mind her storyline but it wasn't my favorite either and the third one is tony so what I have to say about him is I think he was the most fleshed out of the three by far. He um, overdosed on pills. He is a sex worker. He sells his body for more drugs. There's a lot of hardship that's happened to him. And I think he had the most character growth of the three. One thing I didn't really care about when it comes to these characters was obviously I didn't really like the love triangle that formed. And also, one of our characters kind of starts off as being implied to be gay, but then he falls in love with a girl and he's just like magically straight. I wish they would have like said maybe he was bisexual. The way Ellen Hopkins went about it in this, it almost seems like because he turned his life around, now he's straight. That's the way it was kind of written. Following Ellen Hopkins on Twitter and stuff, I do not believe she thinks this way, or at least not currently. But I did not like the way this was written. This is also written in a verse format, just like the Crank Trilogy. 
So maybe it was the way it was written in the format or maybe she just didn't use the right language. But I kind of wish he would have either came out as like, I kind of wish he would have just came out as bisexual and mentioned that. But yeah. Okay, so the biggest complaint I see is there's too much going on with each character. I understand that it seems really overwhelming, but realistically, I do not think that you could tell a story like this and not have a lot to go on. If somebody's getting to the point where they want to end their life, most of the time, I'm even willing to bet 95% of the time, there is a lot more than one little slight issue or two issues. There's usually layers and layers and layers of problems in that person's life needs not being met whether it's mental health needs other needs whatever right and i just think maybe she tackled too many characters at one time or had the story too short or wrapped it up too short in this and so therefore it's just too much going on and it doesn't feel like enough was resolved at the end i do see some of that but i think the way she went about it was actually pretty decent, but I would not say it'd be like a bad idea if she just did two points of view or even focused on a singular character. I think this would make a pretty decent book, like, you know, maybe like a 7 out of 10 to maybe a 9 out of 10. I think if she would have focused on less characters, it would make more sense. But I think for what she was trying to accomplish, she did a pretty decent job. And I'm not just saying this because I love Ellen Hopkins. As the Fallout review tells you, I am willing to say when I don't think she did things right. So the last thing I want to talk about is the ending. So there is a camping trip at the end and I love the idea of it. It kind of like, I like the idea of it. Okay, but it does not seem realistic at all now that I'm an adult that a mental health facility would allow them to go on a camping trip. It just doesn't. I've never been in a mental health facility, so maybe they take trips. I don't know, but I've never heard that in my life. I don't know if there's one that does, but that does not seem realistic. So yes, I kind of harped on this book, but I do think the words that are here they're still beautiful i so love the verse format is this her strongest book not at all i can name you probably like five books right now that if you are wanting to start off with ellen hopkins that i would tell you to do before this but it's definitely not her worst i can name you at least three that i disliked more than this but when it comes to verse format, I think it's hard to say very middle of the road and good, like especially when you write a lot of verse format, especially in different points of view. I think it's there's a lot of room for error. And I think she handled her topics very well. But as I said earlier, if she did two points of view or one, I think this would make this a phenomenal book. And I like the fact that she's at least willing to hit subjects a lot of people aren't, especially back in 2007. Okay, guys, that is it. The final conclusion is yes, I would recommend this, but no, I do not think this should be your first Ellen Hopkins books. This is also assuming that if you're going to read this, you can handle the topics in here. Guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.